Hi everyone, my name is Barbara. Welcome to The Homegrown Artist. Today we are going to be reviewing the Grumbacher Academy watercolor paints. Um, what I've done is I've got the, um, if you saw my review on the Meaden MT10s watercolor palette with the 24 pan set, I have the 12 pan set that I mentioned in that video that I had coming on the way and um, I got it and I tried to record actually filling the set for you. But whenever I went to load it into my computer, it said it was corrupted, so yeah, sorry for y'all missing out on that video. It wasn't that interesting anyway. I'm not like a professional when it comes to loading pans. I usually work in wells and bigger palettes and stuff for the studio. But I figured what I'd do is I'd make it into this little travel palette and use this one instead of my core watercolor um, set like this because they're relatively inexpensive and I have all the colors I need to mix um, most of the colors that I would need in an art journal and usually I'm just sketching in an, in an art journal when I'm on the go and if my purse gets stolen or my bag gets stolen then uh, I'm not losing expensive artist grade watercolor paints. Um, so Grumbacher Academy watercolors are made by the Grumbacher Company of course and uh, they were founded in 1905 I make paintbrushes like this one right here. It's synthetic, but it works really great. Um, they also make other mediums um, such as acrylics and oils, and they even have a line of 63 professional watercolor paints, um, which is kind of a low, low count of different colors, in my opinion, for a, an artist quality line, but I'm sure it gets the job done, and I haven't tried those yet. But I have played around with the art, the student quality, the Grumbacher Academy paints, and they are excellent. So if their student quality line is this great, then I can't imagine what their artist quality line would be like. Um, so uh, the Grumbacher Academy line includes 60 different color choices, and uh, they claim that they use finely ground pigments for smooth, rich paints, um, which I find to be true. Um, their paints are, before I even follow through on the review that I think that their paints are, are amazing. Um, they come in 7.5 milliliter tubes like this one right here. You can see the 7.5 right there and then it has the name and information on the front and on the back it has the pigment information right there and then the um, light fast information right there. And speaking of light fast information, the great thing about the Grumbacher Academy paints is out of their 60 colors, 50 of them First of all, all of them are rated by the ASTM, which is rare in a student quality paint. For instance, uh, if you think about the Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor paints, um, only some of them are rated by the ASTM, and then the rest of them are rated by Windsor and Newton with their permanence ratings, but um, like A, double A, or B, and um, and then the Van Gogh are rated by their own little scale, which is like three stars or something like that. For I think their whole line has three stars. Uh, I'm not actually sure if their whole line has three stars, but the, all the ones that I have did have three stars. Um, so out of their 60 colors, 50 of them have a light fast rating of one, and then eight of them have a light fast rating of two, and only two of them have a light fast rating of four, and both of those are the pigment, um, what is it, PR83, which is like Rose Matter Lake and Alizarin Crimson, which are the traditional... Uh, it's the traditional pigment for pe for alizarin crimson, uh, which most companies have kind of, um, although it's still in their line, they've come up with a replacement for that, um, and Grumbacher Academy did as well, um, but it's a mixture of pigments instead of a single pigment color, and that brings us to the downside of this line is that only 20 of them of the colors that are offered are single pigments, while the rest of the 40 colors use two or more um, pigments, which is kind of expected in most lines of student quality paints, um, especially if you think about a lot of the colors that are um, secondary colors or even like this right here. You expect those to have multiple pigments, um, but still, uh, that's kind of a downside that they don't, a lot of them don't have single pigments, and you kind of have to search for the ones that do have single pigments. Um, but you can find a good range of colors with the single pigments and then just know that your secondary colors and then some of your tertiary colors or other mixed colors of course are going to have more than one pigment. 
Um, so I picked out 12 colors whenever I went shopping for these, and I got them at different times and at different places. Some I got at Hobby Lobby, some I ordered from dickbook.com, and the price range varies. Um, I think retail price is around $5. That's how much like you would pay at Hobby Lobby if you can see that price tag right there, $4.99. Um, then, of course, you can use a coupon, and it makes it around like $3. And then if you order it from um, websites like digbook.com or Jerry's Artorama or Cheap Joe's, um, if they're there, then you generally can get them for, I think I paid $2.83 a tube, which is pretty much the same as the Cotman tubes. And, uh, but I've also seen them listed for like $3.15, so, uh, but they're still in the same price range as Cotman and Van Gogh, so that's excellent. Um, but in my honest opinion, I think, after playing with them for a while, I honestly think that they're the best student quality paints that I've tried. I haven't tried the La Petite Aquarelle from uh, Sennelier yet, which I need to get my hands on, um, but out of the student quality paints that I have, the Cotman and the Van Goghs and these, um, these are by far the best. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the colors that I picked out, which you can see kind of a sample here. And if you can see just how bright and vivid they are in this little color swatch right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the colors that I do have and talk about the pigments and light fast rating. I'm not going to go too in depth about the pigments or anything like that. Um, and then I'm going to compare them to the Van Goghs and to the Cotmans and then uh, to some artist grade paints because they do compare to the artist grade paints that I have or some of them um, with the brightness and the vividness and um, stuff like that. So I'm going to scoot this on over really quick and uh, move these tubes out of the way and zoom in a little bit. So <laughs> this is not uh, the paint's fault. All of the colors that I thought would granulate I basically tried to make them granulate down here and this is Theo Violet. It's made with PV19 and PV29 and it has a light fast rating of 1 and I thought it would granulate because it does have the PV29 but I'm thinking now that it must have way more PV19 than PV29. PV19 can get to this color right here without having the PV29 in it um, so because it doesn't granulate at all I'm thinking that there's not much PB29 in there, but it's a very, very pretty color. And um, I'm doing it in order of how I put it in the palette. So I, I did the palette the same way I did with my cores, where I started with my pinky reds to orangey reds, yellows, greens, blues, and then earth tones. Um, and then, sorry if I'm a little bit shaky. I had a seizure yesterday, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling the effects of it today, so I apologize for that. Alright, so the next color that I have is um, Scarlet Lake, and it's pretty opaque. Uh, this one right here is not very opaque. I would call it semi-transparent. You can see a little bit of color over the black little cube there, but not too much. Um, Scarlet Lake is definitely more opaque, which um, with most orangey reds like this, warm reds, they tend to be opaque, um, I think because they're trying to mimic uh, like the cadmiums and stuff like that. And then also the pigments that go in them are uh, either opaque or semi-opaque. So this one's made with PR107 and PO36, so just a red and an orange to make it a warm, um, a warm red. And the light fast rating for this one is 2. So still very good light fastness. Um, and then the next color I have would be like my magenta type color. It's called Thalo Crimson, and it's made with PV19, so it's pretty close to quinacridone rose. Um, we'll compare them to some quinacridone roses that I have and see how exactly close it is, but it's made with the same pigment, and it has the light fast rating of 1. So that's my... Um, I should have done it this way, huh? <laughs> But that is my warm red, my cool red, and then my purpley color that could be seen as like a quinacridone magenta or something like that, or pretty close to it, but I'm going to use it as a purple. Um, and then I have my warm red, which they call Indian Yellow Hue. Um, it's made with PY65, which is actually Hansa Yellow Deep, and it has a light fast rating of 2. Um, very, very pretty color. I love warm yellows. Alright, and then the next color that I have is um, Lemon Yellow, which I was doing 
when I was painting these right before I was doing an art journal page and I had stuff on my fingers. I washed my hands, but obviously I missed some and I got like a little thing right there, but that's okay. Um, but this is Lemon Yellow, so um, it's made with PY3, which is Hansy Yellow Light, which is what I use in my artist quality paints anyway. Oh, and I was going to show you the... Um, you can see it's semi-opaque, not too opaque. Um, most of the Hansa type colors are semi-opaque or semi-transparent. Uh, it's not too bad though, especially for a student quality paint. It's definitely not bad at all. And then the lemon yellow is also semi-opaque, not too bad either. Uh, also has a light fast rating of one. So that's my cool yellow. And then, weirdly, they have a Viridian, which normally, whenever you purchase a Viridian, it's either, may, either made with PG-18 or PG-7. And when it's made with PG-7, it's actually not like the traditional Viridian. It's actually um, phthalo green. Well, but since they added the PG-7, it made it easier to lift up. Um, it doesn't dry to a hard, hard rock, and then it gives it more like of an intense color. Not as intense as uh, Thalo Green would be on its own, but you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the deep color and then you also get the granulation. So if you like granulation, this is a great color to get. And if you don't like granulation, I would suggest getting their Thalo Green. All right. Um, another great color is uh, their Turquoise, which is made with PB15 colon 4 and uh, PG7. Uh, I don't think they added a lot of PG7 in this one just because it just looks like um, phthalo blue which is what the PB154 is. Um, so I use that as my cool blue and it has a light fast rating of 1 and is transparent if you can see that. There's a little bit of blue over the black um, and I think it's just because of how thickly I use the paint up at the top. Uh, so maybe it's not transparent, maybe semi-transparent would be the more correct term. And then also I got Prussian blue because it's kind of, in my opinion, more of a neutrally blue compared to the other two blues that I have, which I'll show you them side by side in just a minute. Um, it's made with PB27 and has a light fast rating of 1 and is pretty transparent there. And then I have the ultramarine blue, which is made with PB29, like most traditional ultramarines, and then has a light fast rating of 1 and it does granulate pretty well. Um, this one I actually forgot to try to make granulate because I just wasn't thinking about it at the time, but it granulated on its own very, very well. Um, very good for a student quality paint. And it's not as purpley as um, some of the other student quality ultramarines. And uh, also very easy to lift, so that's pretty good. And so I'll show you those side by side and let you see why I think that the Prussian blue is kind of neutral. So like if you see this one is really really cool toned and then this one is really really warm leaning towards purple. Actually on my camera, on my viewfinder on my camera it's making this look like a warm blue but uh, hopefully it's actually showing the true color there. <laughs> um, and then this one seems a little bit more neutral and dark and intense so I can kind of um, mix it a little bit deeper um, and kind of make my own indigo if I needed to. So that's why I included that in, that, in the palette. Alright, and like I said, with the mixed media stuff, I made a mess on these swatches. I apologize for that. I need to redo them. I honestly don't know what it is. I think it's like um, I was messing around with gelatos, which you'll see that video probably before this one. I think I got flakes of gelatos on my art desk, and that's probably why it got all over the place. But anyway, this is raw sienna, and for some reason, instead of just using PBR7, they added PY42. So it's kind of a mix of raw sienna um, with yellow ochre, which is weird. Um, raw sienna is supposed to be transparent, and PBR7 is not an expensive pigment, so I don't know why they did that. Um, but if you can see up there, it's kind of, it kind of makes the color semi-opaque, um, which I don't, normally I don't mind, I mean, normally I don't like opaque colors, but if I'm using this kind of like a yellow ochre, then it's perfectly fine, and, and as you add more water to it, and you don't use it in such thick consistencies, then it becomes more transparent. Um, and it does granulate just a little bit, but because of the PY42, it doesn't granulate as much as a raw sienna would. Which raw sienna itself doesn't granulate that much anyway. 
Uh, and it has a light fast rating of one. And I think that's the last one that I messed up. Um, so the next color I got was Burnt Sienna, which is one of my favorite earth tone colors. And thank goodness, in this one they use just PBR7, which is fantastic. And this is one of my favorite Burnt Siennas in a student quality set because it's not too orange, but it's also not too like dark and earthy. It's like the perfect mid-range Burnt Sienna, and it mixes beautifully with the other colors, especially with the Ultramarine to make um, like Jane's Gray. And um, yeah, it's just a beautiful color and it has a light fast rating of one and like most burnt siennas, it's semi-opaque. And then the last color I have is the Payne's Gray, which is a beautiful Payne's Gray. It's made with three pigments, um, PB15 colon four, so phthalo blue, PB29, which is ultramarine, and PBK6. And you can tell that they use a good amount of ultramarine because it does granulate, which I, I love granulating colors, so I don't mind that at all. If you don't like granulating colors, then you <laughs> might not like this Payne's Gray. Uh, and it has a light fast rating of one. Very pretty Payne's Gray there. It's not too blue, not too neutral, so it's, it's a good Payne's Gray. So those are the colors I have there, and I'm going to pick them all back up and we're going to compare. I'm going to use this little chart right here that I have. I haven't laminated it yet. Uh, I need to before um, I destroy it because I'm accident prone and I do a lot of different art stuff. So especially with the mixed media, I tend to mess up a lot of the watercolor stuff that I'm trying to protect, um, which I've already done right here. If you can see this little splotch of water that fell on it. Um, but I'm going to use this to compare it to the student quality paints just because I have those on other little charts. Uh, so first we're going to compare them to the Cotman, which honestly, I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, so if you can tell, first of all, let me zoom in and show you the Cotman. So if you can tell the Cotman, it doesn't look like the pigments were finely ground enough I guess and then if you try to get a very intense color you can see the brush strokes um, I've said this before in another video um, but they do look intense but uh, you get the the brush strokes in most of the colors uh, so let me zoom back out um, so I definitely prefer the Cotman I meant the Grumbacher Academy colors over the Cotman ones they are more intense more bright more vivid and uh, more transparent I think than the um, than the Cotman colors. Uh, and this one right here, like I said, more intense. Um, it's pretty much, it's a very close color, although they do add PV29 in this one, and I think this one is only PV19. Um, but still, it's more intense color right there, if you can see that. And then if you look at the rose color, um, it's more of a rose color than this one right here. This one I think is supposed to be more like alizarin crimson, although it doesn't really look like alizarin crimson. It looks like um, they tried to make alizarin crimson and got like a mix between alizarin crimson and rose. Uh, no offense to Cotman because I did use them for a good while, but uh, they're not my favorite. And then like if you look at the burnt sienna, you see how orange the burnt sienna is there and you can see how this one is more earthy and orange. Uh, so I definitely like this burnt sienna a lot better. Um, and then, let's see, this is their yellow ochre, and this is the raw sienna. Um, still more, I mean, it's a different color, but this one is more intense and beautiful and um, deeper. And then the ultramarine definitely wins out in the Grumbacher Academy, in my opinion. Um, this one, you get, um, you get a good bit of granulation, but then you also get like those brush strokes when you try to get the color really, really intense. And I didn't even try really hard on this little color swatch to get the colors really intense. Let's see the um, actual little color chart here. Um, this one looks a little bit darker and possibly a little bit more warm, warm but um, I still prefer this one over this one right here. Um, just because of the way it gets all chalky and stuff whenever you try to get it intense. These don't get chalky at all whenever you um, try to get an intense color, which is great. Uh, and then here's the warm red. Um, definitely, definitely prefer this Scarlet Lake over this color right here. This is supposed to be like a cadmium 
red hue, cadmium red medium hue. Um, the Scarlet Lake, so it's completely different, but um, it's definitely more of a warm red that I like better than this one right here. And this one right here as well, even though this one's more orangey. The Indian Yellow, uh, more intense, more deep than the um, Cadmium Yellow they have there. And then the Lemon Yellow, I would say they're probably pretty equal. Although, um, let's see on my cards here. I'm pretty sure I'd prefer... Yeah, comparing them like this with this card, I do prefer... Um, this one over this one. So I think over the Cotman's, they definitely went out. Um, except for the Viridian, of course, because it is a mixture of um, the traditional Viridian rather than just the Thalo Green, which this one is just Thalo Green. Um, although it does get kind of chalky and thick whenever you try to get more of an intense color. Um, whereas this one, although it's a lighter version of that color, um, it doesn't get chalky and, and streaky whenever you try to get an intense color up there. Um, but I do prefer the Thalo Green by itself. But I just, uh, one of those tubes wasn't available, so I picked this one, and it kind of intrigued me anyway, so I probably would have picked it even if the Thalo Green by itself was available, just because I wanted to see how it reacted and how it mixed with other colors. So that's a pretty, I like this color as well. All right. So that's the Cotman colors, which I don't think add up quite at all. And then when you compare them to Van Gogh, I think that they are pretty equal whenever it comes to Van Gogh. Um, the Payne's grays are pretty comparable, and the although the Burnt Sienna in Grumbacher Academy only uses one pigment, the PBR7, which is the, the traditional pigment for Burnt Sienna, um, the two colors are very comparable. I like um, the Burnt Sienna. In Van Gogh, although they, although they do use a black to make, give it that deep, um, earthy color. Um, and then, it's kind of not fair to compare the raw sienna and the yellow ochre here because it's not really the same color. Um, the quinacridone rose, I think in... I mean, they are two different colors. PB19, is it varies throughout artist grade um, paints as well. But uh, I think this Quinacridone Rose is much deeper and uh, a little vibrant, but because they tried to make this Thalo Crimson, I think maybe that's why it's a little bit lighter. But it, um, we'll see how it mixes later and see how it works. Um, the Thalo Blue, this is the Thalo Blue Red shade, so of course the Thalo Blue here, um, which is actually turquoise, it has a little bit more green, is more cool in it. Um, let's see, the Ultramarine definitely wins out in Grumbacher Academy because um, the Ultramarine Deep and the Van Gogh is more purpley and it doesn't granulate as much as the Grumbacher Academy one, or at least in my opinion it doesn't. And then, like I said, it's not really fair to compare the Viridians, but you can see um, just, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> This one has granulation and, of course, has PB18 in it. So, of course, I do prefer this color, especially for mixing, like, deep, deep hues like this one, like these over here and pretty greens. But we'll see how the Viridian mixes later. Um, and the yellows, I think, are pretty comparable. Let me actually get those cards back out. I think they're pretty comparable. I think maybe this yellow, I think maybe the yellows are a little bit more intense and the Grimbacher Academy colors if you can see that on camera, um, but pretty comparable. The only thing is, um, which we'll see in just a minute, is that the Van Gogh colors don't really have that high of a flow, and I'm pretty sure just from working with them that the Grumbacher Academy colors have have a good amount of flow. Um, and then, so we are going to do some of our own little testings. Um, so I already did one little test. <laughs> Uh, just because I was trying to make a bigger square, but uh, glazing, uh, which we'll do last, I'm going to go ahead and heat set that right there just to make sure that everything is kind of sunken into that, this page because I just painted this probably 30 minutes ago and I want it to be heat set and dry. Usually with glazing, I either heat set it or leave it overnight to dry so that it can be for sure dried in the page. And uh, this right here on this side is actually where I tried really hard to make 
the um, Theo Violet Granulite because I was like, why is this not granulating? It has thal I mean, it has ultramarine in it and it definitely does not granulate. So I think it's more of like a quinacridone magenta type color than a rose of ultramarine type color. And I'm going to flip this over just so it doesn't bend too badly. Alright, so we're going to do a few tests. And I'll go ahead and use the Grumbacher Academy paintbrush. Let's move this out of the way. Zoom back out so y'all can see everything. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the test, and then um, I'm going to compare the Grumbacher Academy paints with the Artist Quality paints, just so you can see how intense the colors are compared, like, when you compare them to artist quality paints, you cannot tell that they're not artist quality. And sorry if you hear that kind of, like, wiggling in the background, the squeaking. Um, that's me in my chair. <laughs> it's making a lot of noise. Usually I stand up so that I, you can't hear the um, noise there, but not today. All right. So, um, so one of the first tests is how easily they lift. Um, and another thing just to note is, I'm sure you've noticed it, they do crack a little bit whenever you put them in the pans, if you can see especially that um, warm red right there. Um, and that could be human error, maybe I didn't put them in the pans right, but I think um, that's just how they dry. But uh, normally when you see paints that crack like that, they're kind of hard to lift. But um, with these right here, I really don't have a problem lifting up the color and of course my paintbrush had dried a little bit sorry about that I don't have a problem at all lifting up a good amount of color without having to like scrub my brush in there um, if you saw my other video when I was comparing student quality paints with artist quality paints most of the time you have to like scrub a lot harder especially with the Cotman colors to get a high pigment load and with these you really really and truly don't um, but I am gonna spray them because when you do spray them, it's even easier to get a high pigment load, and they um, they stay moist and wet after you spray them, and uh, kind of react just like wet paint straight from the tube. Once you wet them and let them sit for a little bit, it's amazing how easy it is to, to lift up the pigment. So I'm going to go ahead and take that same color, just to show you a little bit of glazing here. Um, so they glaze really well no problems there and you can get like a good depth of color and I'm not going to be like fantastic at painting today because um, I don't know if you can tell but my hands are like really shaky today so I apologize for that alright so now we're going to do um, let's do a lifting test and see how that works out let me get a paper towel I didn't need two of them uh, so we're going to use the ultramarine because that's normally, I guess, the color that a lot of people um, lift clouds and stuff out of. So we'll try that. See how beautiful that granulation is? And you barely have to try to make it granulate. It's, it's great. All right, so let's see how well that lifts up. if you're trying to create clouds. Yeah, it lifts up pretty well. And then of course you can go back in with a little bit of water and see if you can lift up back to white. See how that works. Yeah, you can get pretty close to lifting it up back to the white of the paper. Um, so that's really good. They lift up um, like an artist quality paint would or like, like most ultramarines would. Um, let's see about a standing color. Let's use that turquoise and see how that lifts up while wet. Because I know when it dries, it's not that great of a color to try to lift up. All right. 
And this is student quality paper, so it should lift up pretty easily. And it does. I'm horrible at making clouds right now. Um, lifts up pretty easily on a student quality paper, so that's good to know. Um, now, if you were using an artist quality paper, I don't think it would lift up this easily, but, um, and once it dries, it definitely won't, won't lift up easily. Um, if I remember, I'll come back and try to lift it up once it dries. All right, so we're going to come back to the glazing in a little bit, but um, first I'm going to do some mixing of some colors. So I showed you the colors that I do have, and I got those colors for a reason. I'm just going to end up having to make another one of these because I am making a mess. I just spilled more paint on there. Um, but so I got, I picked these colors out for a reason. One, because um, they're relatively good light fastness. Um, most of them were single pigments. Um, and then also I got kind of three primary color mixtures out of there. Um, I got the, the main one, the true primary color, so I got the crimson or the magenta. Um, either one of these would work for that, actually, um, or a mixture of it would work. Um, so I got the, that, the phthalo crimson, I have the turquoise, which would be the cyan, and then I have the um, lemon yellow, and then I have the warm kind of primary color will, where I have the scarlet lake for that, the warm red, Indian yellow, and then um, the ultramarine, and uh, or I could use the Prussian blue, and then I have more of an earthy kind of mixture. So burnt sienna would be like my earthy red, raw sienna would be my earthy yellow, and either Payne's gray or the uh, or ultramarine or Prussian blue could be the earthy darker version of the blue. I think I'm going to use these three colors. Uh, we'll see. So we're going to just mix some colors here and see how they mix. So first we're going to start off with the lemon yellow. And I'm just going to do the little lines that I do normally. And then we're going to go into the crimson. And actually I'm going to have to take a break because I can hear my child crying right now. So I will be right back. Actually, I'll finish this one right here, and then I'll be right back. And you can see already that how they flow together. So pretty excellent flow there. And you can make your warm red with that. And then I'm going to go into the turquoise. Make a beautiful purple there. And then back into the yellow and see what kind of green it gives me. Oh, they flow so beautifully. It's a beautiful, bright and vivid green there. Alright, so I will be back. Let me go check on my kid. I will be right back. Alright, so he's okay. He was just having a little nightmare. <coughs> it's his nap time right now, and... Yeah, he was having a little nightmare, poor thing. Um, so yeah, you um, can see the colors, the lemon yellow, uh, the magenta type color, the phthalo crimson, the um, cyan type color, and then again the lemon yellow. They make beautiful, bright, and vivid colors. And then let's see the other one. Let's see, I'm going to use Scarlet Lake, Indian Yellow, and I think I'm going to use the Prussian Blue. And we'll see how that works out. You can switch it up. You don't have to do the exact same thing as I am. So this is the Scarlet Lake. And I kind of did it out of order from what I normally do. But that's all right. And then the Indian Yellow, which is a very bright, beautiful yellow. I like Kansas Yellow Deep. It's a pretty color. And you can get beautiful oranges with that. and even uh, warmer reds. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that Scarlet Lake because it dries relatively quick on this art student quality paper. And then let's see what I say, Prussian Blue I would use. So here's the Prussian Blue. 
it's kind of, I don't know, maybe I should have used ultramarine. <laughs> but it still gives you that murky kind of purple. Ooh, it actually gives you like a very neutrally dark purple. I'm going to add a little bit more red to that though. <laughs> See, there we go. There's more. But you can get that beautiful dark blue right there. Kind of like a Payne's Gray, almost. That's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, you can get like a very dark blue there. That's pretty. Alright, and then we got the Indian Yellow on the other end again. And you get more of an earthy green than that one up there. That one's more bright and vivid. And you can get it even lighter, earthy green. Um, so it's it's not as like earthy and toned down as if I would use, would have used an ultramarine. But so maybe uh, we'll try the ultramarine in Scarlet Lake and see what happens, and then the burnt sienna and uh, raw sienna with the Payne's gray and see what happens as well. Um, so this is the raw sienna slash yellow ochre according to the pigments. Alright. And then the burnt sienna. And it just gives you more of an orangey version of that burnt sienna. But that is what you're, I guess you would be looking for if you um, wanted a toned down earthy palette. I made a little bit more of that burnt sienna on there. A little bit more of that raw sienna as well. Alright, so it makes kind of an orange there. And then we're going to get, what I say, the ultramarine blue. And you get that mixture, you get the more toned down paint, uh, Jane's Gray. You don't really get a purple. Um, we can try to add in a little more burnt sienna there and see if we can get kind of a purpley type color. I don't think we'll quite get there. No, we mostly get like grays. Let's add some more of that ultramarine. Uh, but there's the range you can get from mixing the burnt sienna with the grays. And then let's add some more of the ultramarine and see how that does with the raw sienna. So you get a very neutralized, uh, I'm running out of space on the page so I'm just mixing it on the page. But you get a very neutralized greenish color very very neutralized greenish color um, so that would be like your more earthy mixture there let's see what happens when you mix the we'll go up here alright right over here let's see what happens if you mix the ultramarine with the scarlet lake so ultramarine actually with the Scarlet Lake. You still get a very toned down purple, not as toned down as you actually got with the um, Prussian Blue. Let's add a little bit more. And then, so still mixing these colors, you get very bright and vivid colors. Let's do Ultramarine with the Indian yellow. Let's see what happens there. Very toned down, earthy. Not as toned down as with the raw sienna, but still very toned down and earthy green. Still bright and vivid, and it granulates in both cases. In all cases. All right. Let's see. What did I say? Burnt sienna and raw sienna with the Prussian blue. 
happens there. All right, there's the Prussian blue. Here is burnt sienna. You kind of get like a murky brown um, to almost a green. You can see that. And then let's see what the raw sienna does. Makes a toned down but very pretty blue. So yeah, so you still get bright and vivid colors when you mix these colors together. Um, I'm running out of space on my page. I know I have this space up here, but I was gonna do show you how well they flow up there. Uh, let's see what else. What else can we get? I haven't cleaned this palette yet, so I'm mixing all the colors on the paper. I want to see if I can get with the um, Viridian, and I know I don't have a laser and crimson on the palette, but I want to see if I can get something close to like Moon Glow. Um, so that's made with Viridian. Ultramarine and um, a Lizard Crimson, but I don't have a Lizard Crimson, so I'm going to use my Thalo Crimson and see what I get. But this is a very pretty color, uh, just those two colors mixed together. And I did that in the completely wrong spot. Let's see what happens when I get this. Oh, so that's pretty close to Rose of Ultramarine, although it does have that green in there. Let's add some more of that green, see if we can get Moon Glow. I think we may be able to do it. That's pretty close to Moon Glow right there, um, if you can see it on the camera. Let me zoom in. So yeah, you can get a color relatively close to Moon Glow. Uh, with that Viridian mixture. So that's pretty awesome that I can mix my own Moon Glow with a student quality paint. Um, and then Rose of Ultramarine. Let's just mix the Ultramarine by itself with the Thalo Crimson and see if I get like a Rose of Ultramarine color. Yeah, very close and it does granulate. Let's pull that out some. I know y'all can already tell how well these colors flow. Let's see if it separates. We'll wait till it dries and see if it separates kind of like uh, the Rose of Ultramarine does. From Daniel Smith, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, Daniel Smith has a beautiful color that a lot of um, watercolor color artists like. It's a convenience color. It's basically just PB19 and PB29, so a rosy color like quinacridone rose and um, ultramarine mixed together but whenever it granulates and the colors separate you get like that pinky color and then you can also see the blue color and it's very very beautiful and the moon glow is also a color by daniel smith that a lot of people try um, to make on their own so i just wanted to see if i could do that and we'll come back to that and check it out and see how that worked out all right so now i think the phthalo color has had quite a good amount of time to sit there. Let's see if it's easy to lift up. I think it will be because it's student quality paper, but I think not as easy as when it was dry. I think, like I said, because it's student quality paper that you could probably scrub it enough, but then again, it's student quality paper, so you don't want to scrub it that much, but you could probably I would say no, don't scrub it a lot. You can lift it up a good amount, but not back to the color it was whenever it was wet. Uh, and on artist quality paper, I think it would sink in much quicker, uh, like into the cotton much quicker, that you wouldn't be able to lift it up like this while it was wet, and you definitely wouldn't even be able to lift it up like that uh, without like a scrubby brush or something like that. All right, so to the glazing, let's see how that works out. And let's get on camera, Barbara. All right, so here's the glazing. So you can already see that it glazes pretty well. Um, just the same color. Let me zoom back out a little bit. So you can see here where I glazed it over the same color. And then right here, it's also in lighter versions over the same color. And even though it's student quality paper, um, it didn't lift up 
very easily. So let's see what happens whenever I mix um, some yellow, a very light version of yellow. And I apologize, I haven't actually cleaned this palette yet. I haven't even started using it until this video. So everything's still puddling up and pulling, um, which is not something you want. All right, so over the pink, let's see how well it glazes. Yeah, very beautifully. No problems. Even on a student quality paper, so that's really good. And then let's see over the blue what happens there. My paper's moving around on me. Yeah, you get beautiful glazes with this paint. Uh, let's zoom in so you can see that. And I'm using light colors here. Um, because I've already shown you the darker version of glazing right there. And, uh, yeah, the yellow is still the yellow that it's supposed to be. The colors didn't lift up too much and, and bleed into it. So I feel like glazing, even on student quality paper, is um, pretty good with these paints. Uh, so I guess I'll just show you the flow on the back of this paper, or maybe I'll get another piece of paper. <laughs> see if I have a piece of paper. I have this one right here. We'll try it on this one. So all I'm going to do is, I don't know, maybe do like a rose or something like that. So let me zoom out again so y'all can see. And then just kind of wet like a rosy area. And see how the colors flow. So I'm going to use, it really, really does flow very, very well. Look at that. Oh, I think these are slowly becoming, or quickly becoming, like my favorite, favorite student quality paints there. Let's add a little bit of yellow in there and see how... Let's add a warm yellow, maybe? No, let's add a cool yellow. Let's add that lemon yellow. Uh, let's add that up here. So that flows not as much as the crimson, but still flows. So I guess that would be my lights coming from that way. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of more crimson because that's too much yellow, and I don't want it to be yellow. I want it to be kind of orange. And then kind of pull that out some. You see, they still flow. They flow so great. It's amazing. All right, let's see how the dark colors. I'm going to use the Theo Violet on there and see how that works out. So once it dries, you can still get that, you know, the line there. Um, and that's another test of the paint, is that once, even though you're still working wet in a wet, once it dries a little bit, you can still kind of get, um, not a hard edge line, but a, a more detailed line. That's something, like right there, that's something that you want to be able to do and control whenever you're painting. This is going to look like a wild, crazy rose because of me just trying to play around with the flow, but it's still pretty. So now it's going to get kind of murky up here, possibly, because of the yellow and the purplish color there. But yeah, you can still get those detailed lines whenever the paint is still kind of wet. Um, but not too wet. I'm sure like like if the paint's wet like this right here and you try to get that detailed line it's not really going to happen. Let's try that again. Actually Maybe not, because that Theo Violet just, it doesn't have as much flow. It still has flow, but not as much as uh, the other colors. It flows when you pull it out. So it's still a good color for like, uh, if you're a loose painter. 
So just to complete the rise a little bit, I'm going to use some more of that crimson and add some more out here. And even though that was a high flowing color, you still get can get those semi-defined lines there, so that's pretty good. So that's a pretty pretty decent rose there. Uh, let's see how the lifting is. Pretty decent. I am slowly falling in love with these paints. Like I feel like anything technique or subject that I don't fully understand, maybe, um, and I'm just practicing, these paints act a lot like artist quality paints. So I feel like I would probably use these a lot, a lot more than I use my other student quality paints. Let's see about the greens and the blues, or the yellows and the blues. Let's see how they flow. Let's use, I guess, um, let's use the turquoise just as a base for the leaf there. And see how the yellow goes into that. I'm going to use the deeper yellow because roses have deeper. Oh, it flows so pretty. I like these paints a lot. I know I keep saying that, but I really do. They are just pretty. So yeah, that's my quick little demonstration there. Let's see, maybe we'll do another, another little jaggedy rose here and see what the Viridian looks like, how it flows. It actually looks like I've already created the Viridian, but I think the more granulating colors, let's see, let's see how the Viridian flows. Oh, still beautifully. Wow. So yeah, very high flowing colors for, um, for student quality paints, which is, I mean, really and truly that is amazing because most of the student quality paints don't have high flow and, uh, in less than five minutes I painted this and it has great flow and um, great liftability and beautiful color mixing it's I mean yeah they're really good paints so one of the problems the main problems that I have with student quality paints especially um, the Cotman ones is they have absolutely like no flow um, and Van Gogh too they're I mean they're very highly intense colors but they they don't flow that well either and uh, as you can see with the Grumbacher Academy paints, they flow much like the artist quality paints and still have that vibrant intensity that you want in your watercolors. Um, because watercolors, you want them when you buy them to be bright and intense because water always, you know, tones them down. So when you buy them, you want to be able to get this dark and intense color. And then of course, you can always take it and water it down as much as you need to to get a lighter version of that color. Um, so it's great that they're they're bright and intense and beautiful colors, but they also flow and they're all rated by the ASTM. And um, 50 of them are have excellent light fastness, like I said earlier. So I mean that's that's a big deal. So I think Grumbacher Academy, um, excluding the La Petite Aquarelle and some other student quality paints that I have tried, but the three main ones that you can find in the US, out of them, Grumbacher Academy is definitely, definitely now my favorite. Um, I would say if you can get your hands on these, definitely, if you're starting out, choose these paints because they, they work very similar to artist quality paints. And um, yeah, they're just beautiful. So I said I would come back to the Rose of Ultramarine looking color 
and see how it granulates and I would say it did an excellent job. It definitely looks like Rose of Ultramarine there. Very beautiful. You can see like the um, rose color kind of popping out there and then also the ultramarine color. Very beautiful granulation. Um, and then you can also see the granulation down here with the earth colors um, because the ultramarine and the burnt sienna were both granulating all these colors granulated. It's beautiful. I really, really and truly am in love with these paints now. Um, which I've been playing around with them for, um, I don't know, I think I got like the first two tubes of paints, just trying them out. I got the turquoise, which was in another palette, and then I got the Prussian blue. And uh, because it was mixed in with my artist grade palette, I didn't really think about the fact that it was a student quality paint. So I, I wasn't thinking about the fact that it was working so well. I was just like, oh, it's it's working like a like a paint like a paint that I'm used to, to working and um, it really really is I mean they really are gr excellent paints like really close to artist quality paints so yeah like I said if uh, if I were you I would definitely if I had a choice over um, Cotman and uh, Van Gogh I would definitely choose these colors or these these this brand of paints uh, so now I'm going to close all this and then we're going to compare them to some artist quality paints and see how they kind of line up with that. So here's my little swatch book. And like I said in the other video, I got this idea from um, In Liquid Color. Um, Denise with In Liquid Color, she started making these swatches and everything. And uh, like I said, I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I'll leave a link and an iCard to her channel so you can see all of her stuff. Um, she runs a really excellent channel as well. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's get started comparing to artist quality paint. So whenever you first set this down next to these artist quality paints, I mean, it doesn't look, they don't look much different. And like I said earlier, like with the PV-19, this is why I think that they used mostly PV-19 because here's two PV-19s uh, without any of the PV-29 and they, I mean, it looks very similar. Um, I think the M-Gram Quinacridone Violet is m more intense and more um, transparent and uh, vivid, but whenever you compare it to like Windsor Newton, honestly, I think the Van Gogh actually, I meant not the Van Gogh, the Grimbacher Academy actually wins out there. Um, and then even the Bordeaux, eh, it's not really fair to compare it to that. Um, and then Thalo Crimson, which is PV-19 as well. Here's Permanent Rose. Let me go up there. Here's Permanent Rose, and I would say that those are pretty, I mean, even Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose and Mission Gold's Permanent Rose. I mean, like, those are all three artist quality paints there, and the Thalo Crimson really does add up. Like, it's bright and intense and vivid, has high flow. So, yeah. Um, these are great colors. So, let's see if I have a PR-107. I don't think I do. Mm-mm. Let's see. Let's see what the closest I have to. Let's see. Scarlet. Here's Pyrrhal Scarlet. It's really hard to push this little book up on to the camera, or this big book on the camera. Here's Pyrrhal Scarlet. So I would think the Daniel Smith Pyrrhal Scarlet kind of wins out there, but it's also a completely different pigment. Uh, let's see, Permanent Red. Um, it's made with PR-112. It's by Mission Gold, but I think the Scarlet Lake is kind of more of an intense color there, possibly. Um, let's see. Um, I don't think I have other colors quite like this to compare it to. Uh, Windsor Red, maybe. Windsor Red is a little bit cooler than this one right here. But um, still, I think Grumbacher Academy is more intense and bright and vivid than the Windsor Red. Wow. Alright. So, let's see. Here's PY65 uh, by Mission Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep. Uh, which the pigment is Hansa Yellow Deep. Um, 
So I think because they were trying to make it Indian yellow, they made it a lot deeper. So it kind of, I don't really have anything to compare it to. But as you can see, it's still, or as you cannot see, sorry, um, it's a, in a very intense yellow, very warm yellow. I don't have another Indian yellow. That's like on my wish list of colors to get. But um, you can see that it, it definitely compares, like it really does, to the artist quality paints there. Um, lemon yellow, again, definitely adds up. It compares to them. Uh, I have a lot of Hansi yellow, yellows, and uh, here's Hansi Yellow Medium by M. Graham. I think M. Graham <laughs> probably beats Grumbacher Academy, but when you go to like Mission Gold, um, I think they're pretty equal there. Um, Daniel Smith. Honestly and truly, as much as I love Daniel Smith, I think the Grumbacher, and you can't see this again, I'm so sorry. Um, so then when you go to compare it to like uh, Daniel Smith, Honestly and truly, um, I think they're pretty equal, like with the intensity of the color. Although Daniel Smith is more transparent than this one right here. But like when you compare it to, um, let's zoom in, make sure you can see that. When you compare it to Mission Golds, Mission Golds is more opaque than Grumbacher Academy. Um, yeah, goodness. Alright, so I don't have any of these kind of greens, but um, here is, this is phthalo green, so whenever you compare it to the phthalo greens, it's not as intense um, as those greens. So um, whenever you go to compare it to the Viridians, however, um, like I said in my core review, their Viridian green is probably the most intense and beautiful um, Viridian green that I've come across. And uh, I think they pretty much compare there. Um, although, like, whenever you fade the color out, which I kind of, like, try to create blooms and stuff down here. But it seems like um, you still get more, I guess, more pigment load. But then even with the Viridian right here, um, you can see that the Grumbacher Academy is more intense than the Daniel Smith Viridian. Um, but that's because of the PG-7 that's added into it. And, um, let's see. Turquoise. Alright, so here is the Peacock Blue from Mission Gold. It's the same pigments pretty much in theirs. Um, and that's why I said I don't think they use a lot of PG-7 because you can see this one is a lot greener than this one. It compares more to, um... I mean, it is cooler than Thalo Blue Green Shade, so it is more of a turquoise color, but not as turquoise as this one down here. So here are the um, Thalo colors. Um, so it is a lot cooler. I'm going to zoom out again because moving this little book around is driving me insane. Um, let's see. I think... Uh, I don't know. Here's Thalo Turquoise from Daniel Smith. Um, and you can see the difference. This one's much greener. Um, so basically, they just made a very, very cool Thalo, Thalo Blue. <laughs> it's not as... as um, It's much cooler than these right here. And then the other ones I have up here as well. But still a very pretty, pretty color. Um, Prussian Blue. I only have, I think two other versions of Prussian Blue. Um, so I have Windsor & Newton's which is called Antwerp Blue but it uses the same pigment as Prussian Blue and as you can see the Grumbacher Academy is much more intense and darker and a little bit on the warmer side and then with the Mission Gold Prussian Blue definitely Grumbacher Academy is way more intense um, and uh, I don't know I kinda like it better. <laughs> Sorry, Mission Gold and Windsor and Newton. Um, and then the Ultramarine Blue. Although it does look a little bit more chalky than the Artist Grade ones, um, the vibrancy of the colors definitely compares. So if you can see that there. Um, I think even the granulation compares quite a bit. So Really, really good, <laughs> good colors here. 
Um, let's see. I'm going to have to redo this one because it's so messed up. But um, raw sienna. I don't think I have another raw sienna. Honestly and truly. Um, it's kind of similar to... I'm sorry if y'all can hear my phone in the background beeping. Um, my husband worries about me because I do have epilepsy. So like every 30 minutes he texts me to make sure I'm okay. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I don't have another raw sienna. But uh, it's just the intensity of the color. I think it compares to a lot of the other colors. Maybe not the pigment load but because when you pull it down it does pull down to much lighter colors but uh just the vibrancy of the colors is, is pretty good compared to artist quality colors um burnt sienna let's see so here are some burnt siennas this is windsor our mission golds which it's a beautiful color beautiful orange color but it's not quite burnt sienna um in my mind and then here are the Daniel Smith and Core Burnt Siennas. Core, Core's is much more like a, a brown burnt sienna and then Daniel Smith's has like a, a pinkish undertone to it. And this one right here, Grumbacher Academy, is like a perfect mixture of like uh, the Windsor & Newton um, professional quality burnt sienna or the Mission Gold burnt sienna mixed with one of these. Um, so it's like, I don't know, it's, it's a very beautiful burnt sienna. I like it quite a bit. And then the last color that I have is uh, Grumbacher Academy Payne's Gray. Let's see, Payne's Gray. So even compared to Windsor & Newton Professional quality, um, the intensity of the color um, is much deeper than, than the Windsor & Newton one. Um, even deeper than the Coors one, which Coors version is very, very neutral, uh, not as blue as the uh, Windsor and Newton one. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that those are the only two Payne's Grays I have so far in my swatch book right now. Um, but yeah, very intense color. And it granulates very, very well. So. Yeah, I think definitely they compare to artist quality paints for sure. Like, they're very intense colors. Um, most of them are have a very high pigment load. And that could, the this right here and this one right here where I said it kind of fades out quicker, so maybe not as much of a pigment load, that could have been me trying to get it to granulate um, here as well. Um, but yeah, they're very beautiful colors, all very intense. Like I said, if you are just now shopping for watercolors and you have no idea what kind to get and you, you want to start with student quality but you don't want to start with poor quality paints, then I would suggest definitely choosing Grumbacher Academy, especially over like Van Gogh or, I mean Van Gogh is still a good good um, paint, I still love them, but uh, these act react much more like artist quality paints. They're very intense, very bright and vivid, and you don't have to scrub to get them to lift up from the pan or the tube. Uh, pan, not the tube, uh, the pan or the well, and uh, yeah, they're just excellent quality paints. So uh, overall, I give these a very, very good review. I hope this review was helpful. I hope that um, you enjoyed all of it and uh, enjoyed seeing the little demonstration and how the colors flowed and everything. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, then please leave that down below in the comments section. And if you have anything else that you want me to review, if I have it or if I can get my hands on it, I will definitely try to do that for y'all. Um, I know my reviews tend to be quite long, and I apologize for that. This time I tried to have them already swatched out beforehand so that it wouldn't take too long. But uh, I try to be very thorough in my reviews just so that you can get kind of your time's worth out of the video. Uh, so that's the reason why my, my reviews are quite long. Um, and if you want me to make them shorter and just kind of go quickly through everything and the main points, uh, then I can do that too. It's all, it's all up to y'all what y'all want to see. Uh, so also leave any of that information down in the comment section down below. And if you do like the video, then please give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye!